So a while back on the channel, I did a series uh, about a year or two ago, and it was uh, it was called Memories, and it was the years of HHN that I went, and I think we left off at 2012. Uh, 2013 was a very interesting year as well for HHN, uh, probably one of my favorites. Um, there was a lot of solid mazes to the event that were there, and there was a lot, it was just a lot of fun in general, and I, I really enjoyed that. Um, as far as mazes went, I mean, this was just a solid year. The only maze I didn't get to go through that year was the Evil Dead, uh, Book of the Dead maze, which was based off the 20, um, 2012 or 2013 remake, and I think it was 2012 remake, and uh, I do wish I would have gone through that, but I've seen walkthroughs and it looks fun, but of course it's never the same, like, <laughs> going through it and experiencing it for yourself, but let's start off with some of the mazes that were there. There was Black Sabbath 13 3D. Uh, El Kukui the Boogeyman, Evil Dead Book of the Dead, uh, Insidious Into the Further, Universal Monsters Remix Resurrection featuring the music of Figure, and The Walking Dead No Safe Haven. Not to mention Terra Tram Invaded by the Walking Dead. Um, so let's start off with Black Sabbath 13 3D. Uh, what's not to like about this maze? This maze was amazing. Um, I am a personally, I'm a big fan of Black Sabbath. I love heavy metal and to see um, the music of Black Sabbath come to life was really, really fun. I really enjoyed um, every minute of it. I mean, going through some of the most iconic songs of Black Sabbath and seeing them come to life in like a kind of a horror experience was just awesome. And I really wish they would go back to that route and bring back more mazes like that with other bands. I do realize licensing rights is a bit hard to get for those, but. If they can pull it off, I would love it. There's so many great bands out there that I would love to see in a maze. Um, heavy metal, punk, you know, just all that fun stuff. It would be just amazing. But Black Sabbath 13 3D really, um, really was an amazing maze. Of course, you had Black Sabbath themselves who actually went through it. And Ozzy looked like he was having the time of his life in that maze. And he enjoyed it a lot with uh, Geezer Butler. And that was really cool. Um, not to mention that year they had just released a new album, Black Sabbath 13. So, I mean, that was the last studio album Black Sabbath had ever released. And then, of course, they went on their farewell tour, and that was it for them. Um, but Black Sabbath 13, nonetheless, was uh, a great maze, and I, I miss it so much. I wish they would bring something like that back. Uh, the next maze was El Kukui the Boogeyman, narrated by Danny Trejo, which was an awesome maze. Um, an original maze to the event, El Kukui uh, told the, the, the Mexican folktale the Boogeyman. Much like La Llorona, the, the previous year, they did a new original folktale. Uh, which was, uh, of course, narrated by the great Danny Trejo. And um, going through that maze was really cool. I mean, you got to see the boogeyman everywhere, and you got to see a lot of, like, really messed up scenes, and you were hearing the story of El Kukui as you were walking through the maze. Such a fun time, and, yeah, I, I do... Um, I, do, I really did like that maze. When Universal uh, Universal Studios Hollywood does original mazes, they never really disappoint. I always enjoy them, um, and I really uh, enjoyed El Kukui. I really did. Um, so they got to do more original mazes in the future. I mean, last year they killed it with Holidays in Hell and um, uh, the Curse of Pandora's Box, which was amazing. So, uh, Evil Dead, Book of the Dead, I didn't get to go through. Um, this was the year I was still doing general admission, um, so I didn't get to go through that, but um, from what I saw on YouTube, it looked great. I mean, it got all the amazing gore scenes from Evil Dead, the remake in 2013 or 2012. I always forget the year that that came out. I think it's 2012. Um, but it got all the gory scenes of that movie, and I thought it was just an awesome um, maze for that, for that year, especially with the whole dark kind of vibe they went with that year, which was really cool. Um, Insidious Into the Further, this is the first year they did Insidious at Halloween Horror Nights, and I have to say they really knocked, knocked it out of the park with this first maze. I mean, Insidious had just come out recently, so for them to do this based around Insidious 1 and 2 was awesome. Or was it the year after? No, this was just Insidious, and then the year after it was Insidious 1 and 2, I believe. Um, but for them to get all the iconic monsters in there and all the, all the awesome scenes, was cool. I mean, I'm terrified of the woman in black in that movie, so I mean, just to see her in that maze was just terrifying. Of course, the red-faced demon as well, very terrifying character, especially in the one scene where um, 
they're gonna go retrieve the son and you know he's up in the mirror or he's up in his workshop just working and he looks out the window like that was terrifying so they really killed it with this maze I really loved it and this was this was just a solid maze nonetheless um, Universal Monsters remixed Resurrection featuring music by figure such a solid maze um, this was when House of Horrors was still around so it took place in the House of Horrors building and um, what they did is basically they just took the Universal Monsters they just took House of Horrors basically and just added the music of figure and remixed it and made it kind of like a club party thing but it was still very scary at the same time um, you had the amazing music of figure going around of course if you guys don't know this was I think the first year figure had come to the event um, and if you guys are aware, Figure has been a longtime friend of the Four Knights, so we can probably expect him again in the future. Uh, he just came back and did Holidays in Hell this past season, which was an amazing maze, and eventually down the line we'll get to that video. But um, yeah, Universal Monsters Remix was fun. I remember walking out of that maze, just me and my cousin were just vibing with the music, and then we downloaded the soundtrack and just loved it. It was awesome, and I, I think the music for that maze was, was amazing. I mean, of course, he bases all of his music around, like, horror icons and stuff, so that whole soundtrack and album um, was based around a different monster, like Frankenstein, Leatherface, all that fun stuff. So it was really cool to see the music of Figure come to life with the Universal Classic Monsters, which I thought was awesome. The last maze they had at Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights 2013 was The Walking Dead No Safe Haven. This was the second year they did The Walking Dead after the first year run was a, a success uh, based off the first season. Uh, this season they took place in season three and I believe this was the first year they did The Prison as well. Um, which was an amazing facade, one of my all time favorite facades of The Walking Dead. Um, and to walk through the scenes of, of a little bit of season two going into season three, of course with the governor being the, the big time villain of those seasons, um, it was really cool to to see all the iconic scenes from the governor's office to walking through the prison itself, which became an, uh, a staple for the permanent attraction, which is now closed. Um, but it was really cool to walk through the prison, go to Woodbury, and check all that out and see how good of a job they did with the makeup on the zombies, which I thought was really cool. Um, of course, you know, AMC's partnership with, with Walking Dead would go on to make more mazes, which we'll talk about in the next uh, video of this, but I felt that with The Walking Dead, it did an amazing job uh, touching all the points of seasons uh, two and three. Uh, mostly season three, there was, I don't even remember if there was anything in season two, it's been a while, but I gotta rewatch the video, but I think it was mostly focused on season three, which was really cool. Um, but nonetheless, it was, it was a really solid maze. Uh, now, going into the Terror Tram, they did the Walking Dead uh, Terror Tram, um, which, of course, when you go into the back lot, there's zombies everywhere, and it kind of ties into the whole Walking Dead lore and story like that. So, that was cool to get off and, and see the zombies invade the base motel, invade the, the base house, and, of course, the War of the Worlds uh, plane crash set, which was always uh, a fun thing. And, of course, uh, in those years, they used to make you walk up this hill, and it would actually extend the Terror Tram even more, and I missed when they did that. It was kind of a pain in the ass to walk up that hill, but nonetheless, I mean, I, I, I did like it when they used to extend the Terror Tram out more and uh, gave them more room to add more scenes, add more scares, and it made the uh, Terror Tram experience a little bit longer, which I missed. So I, I hope that if they ever do decide to bring back the Terror Tram, um, that they, they bring that feature back, which was really cool. Um, but nonetheless, for me, the Terror Tram has always been one of my favorites because I do like walking the iconic sets of Whoville the Bates Motel, and of course, uh, the plane crash scenes from War of the Worlds, which is always a uh, fun time, especially me wanting to be a filmmaker. Looking at all that stuff is just beautiful. Uh, so, so, so let's get to some scare zones, shall we? Uh, first and foremost, they had uh, Cirque du Clowns. This was on the old Paris streets, and it was all a clown-based scare zone, of course. Um, Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights is famous to bring clowns over to a scare zone or a maze, which was really good. Um, it was a small little scare zone. It went from the uh, start of Mel's Diner all the way back to now where Despicable Me is, and that kind of just ended. And then if you went to the other side, it was, of course, The Curse of Chucky, which was a giant uh, release at that point. That was the return of Chucky, uh, the original voice and everything. Um, and that was the return of a new franchise for Chucky, so that was really cool to see like dolls come to life and all that, like they looked all sadistic and stuff. And of course, you had Chucky running around, which was really cool. But um, yeah, those two scare zones on uh, on the French Street and on um, 
on the other side too were really good where now uh, Secret Life of Pets is going to be. They were really good scare zones. They're very skulled scare zones and, and they design wise they looked amazing so that was cool. Uh, this was the, also the first year we got Purge Survive the Night. Uh, the Purge movie had just dropped and bringing it to HHM was probably a very smart decision on their point because this actually was what started their relationship with Blumhouse. Um, now, Blumhouse, if you guys know right now, is kind of taking over the horror world. They kind of are buying out all the rights to these amazing properties, and they are just killing it in the horror world, whether it be a very shitty movie or a very good movie. It's very hit or miss with Blumhouse, but nonetheless, I support that company left and right because they are the modern horror gods right now. But uh, to, for them to bring The Purge to HHN was an amazing uh, decision. It first started out as a scare zone, and um, it was an amazing scare zone. That was... Uh, of course the opening ceremony so I mean just seeing you know hearing the siren go off and then them coming at you was just an amazing experience that I'll never forget um, especially with me and my cousin when we used to go every year all the time it was just it was always cool to to see that to just experience that with him we'd get excited just get ready for the event that would really pump us up um, you know scarecrows another um, another uh, scare zone that they had at um, Another scare zone that they had at the event, I believe that was where, I don't know, I don't think Toxic Tunnel was there yet, no it wasn't. Um, Scarecrows, where was Scarecrows? Oh, yeah, Scarecrows was where they uh, actually, the old layout of Universal Studios, where Shrek 4D and everything was, it was in kind of that area, it was right after the purge, so. It was cool to see that old scare zone back there. I mean, I missed that area the way it was laid out, um, where the Curious George ball pen and everything used to be. That was really cool. So that is no longer there. It literally leads right into Harry Potter land, and then it goes and curves into Springfield, which is um, at Universal Studios right now. Um, but that was really cool, and I do and I did enjoy that, which was really cool. Uh, and the last, of course, uh, scare zone that they had for The Walking Dead, because this was the first year that they opened up the back lot for mazes, which Black Sabbath 13 3D was, and The Walking Dead were, um, which was, of course, The Walking Dead Dead on Arrival, which, if you guys went to Halloween Horror Nights last year, that's where All Hallows Eve, uh, All, All Hallows Evil was, and that's where you, where you let in to go to The Walking Dead and to Black Sabbath 13 3D. Now, if you guys know... Uh, within the last couple years the back lot has actually become a staple to HHN they actually usually put like three mazes back there with the scare zone and they have like food trucks and stuff back there for you to hang out um, and last year on on the Thursdays for 80s night they had a 80s music playing and themed uh, different themed churros which was really cool but nonetheless Walking Dead Dead on Arrival was a really good uh, scare zone of course it, it expanded that story of season 3 for The Walking Dead as well as the Terror Tram and the Maze which was really cool this was the first year they kind of really let The Walking Dead take over uh, Halloween Horror Nights completely um, and we'd see that more to come in 2014 which we will talk about in another video um, of course the show they had at the time was Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and I think that was the last year they actually did Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure 2014 may have been the last year um, but when we get to that video uh, we'll know for sure, but I, I'm, I'm almost certain 2013 was the last year of Bill and Ted's Excellent Halloween Adventure, um, which I do so much miss. Um, Bill and Ted's uh, Excellent Halloween Adventure was much like The Hanging at Knots, where they took a lot of pulp, uh, they took a lot of pop culture references and, and stuff, and they just made fun of it, which was awesome. Um, and of course, you have Bill and Ted, who are just two funny people. Uh, that I that I loved a lot and um, you know watching the movies it's hilarious and then watching that show was awesome and when they took that away that kind of sucked I mean I can see why I guess a lot of people get offended with joking and, and, and a lot of the jokes they would do and stuff but hey this is why we go to these events so that is HHN 2013 memories I enjoyed HHN so much uh, in 2013 and that really opened up my eyes more with um, with what this event was about. I mean, 2011 was the first year, 2012 we went, and now 2013. Um, it was such a fun time. And yeah, make sure to tune in next week. We're going to be talking about HHN 2014, what I remember, and how much fun I had. But until then, I am the Knights of Horror, and I will see you guys soon.